war. War has been raging since the beginning of mankind. For land, for money, for religion, politics, power and pride. Wars have made man free, created justice. War has and will be forever an inherent part of mankind. During the winter months, a unique breed of people have begun their preparations for war, each of them in anticipation for the journey to the vast Arizona landscape where two armies will clash in mortal combat. This is Astraea War. <laughs> Australia War is unique. It is not only a time of battle, it is also a time to celebrate. Bards and minstrels pack their instruments of entertainment, cooks prepare their kitchens for the long haul, and warriors tune their skills and sharpen their weapons. Nostalgia and revelry fill the air as modern-day lives meet middle-aged tradition. At Australia War, people gather to celebrate history and leave their normal lives behind. The past becomes the present. Yeah, I'm moving up in the world. <laughs> Australia War began 16 years ago, developing as the SCA grew. The first war was held at Lake Nicasio in Marin County. There was a rock out there, there's an island in that lake. It's a, it's a reservoir, really. And, and with low water, I guess there's a causeway you can walk out to that island. So people walked out there, and there was a small war with archery, oddly enough, even, even then. And there, was, there were heroic deeds done, and, and people dying from arrows and, and a final siege at the rock on, on the island. It's, it's a, a grand and glorious story, but you know, of course it grew in the telling, as, as all good SCA stories do. <laughs> and of course the uh, no shit, there we were, stories start off very early on in the SCA, but uh, they were there. And it was, you know, they divided up into two sides, or rather arbitrarily, had a war, it was great. Australia was soon to come. Although Pensig was well established by the time the wars in the south began, Australia held a magic and provided an escape from long, cold winter months in the rest of the country. Well, Australia actually was the third location, or maybe fourth, for these wars. The original wars in the south started between um, Kaid and Aitenveld. I started going down into them a few years after it started, and we were fighting at a place called Burrow Creek. Mm -hmm. And the Burrow Creek Wars were pretty wonderful, but we soon outgrew the site. The 
next after Burl Creek stopped, the next two years the war was held at a, a site near Quartzsite. And it was, wasn't much of a site, and those wars are memorialized today, mostly known as, as Cat Box 1 and Cat Box 2, because the place was nothing but sand or, you know, kitty litter. <laughs> and they, they got a bulldozer in and built a pretty nice castle. By the next time I went, by the time um, the Estrella Wars were well established, I, I, started, I went back because I'd heard that it was fun again, and it was true. Those were great wars, a lot of fun. Uh, the whole Estrella site, I liked the Estrella site. I liked the chance to participate in battles. There were people there from all over the world, of course. We had people from Europe and Australia, Japan. Uh, grand, grand, wonderful fighting. Really, really good events. Um, good parties, good fighting, good chance to meet old friends again. Um, it's really funny how you can end up not seeing somebody for 10 years and it's just like you saw them last week. And that's a good thing about the SCA. Grand battles, drunken parties, old friendships rekindled, and new ones born, each an integral part of the Estrella War. People travel from around the world to bask in the glory of these festivities. Uh, we're from Montana. Montana? Steve yeah. from Butte. These guys are from Missoula. From, uh, I think he's from Kalispell. Kalispell. You guys uh, drive down? Yeah. Take yeah. a bus. It took us 37 hours wow. at 50 miles an hour. Yeah, we're from Oregon. It took us about 18 hours. Yeah. The war attracts people of all ages and from all walks of life, from first-timers to 30-year veterans, heavy fighters to belly dancers, each with their own reason for coming, whether to hone and share their skills, trade their wares, or just to enjoy the company of others. They've all come to enjoy a kind of Middle Ages country fair that SCAers call war. Astrea is also a place to learn medieval arts and sciences. Classes are tucked away, nearly forgotten about, in the frenzy of war. But those who know enjoy spending time out of the sun learning the day-to-day -day aspects of living in the Middle Ages. Amazingly beautiful costuming now. Um, people have done original research, translated original recipes. Uh, the cooking has gone from being, you know, somebody stops off at the store and buys a pre-roast chicken to people doing real medieval food. And turns out it's quite good, and maybe people didn't realize that to begin with. Um, there's also been research in so many different arts and sciences and religious, calligraphy, the illumination, the dancing, just incredible work. I mean, I don't know how many SCA members have gotten their PhDs based on work they've gotten, you know, done through the SCA, but I know there's been a number of them. And we do good work, we do good research. There are groups that do better than, than we do because they're, they're confined to a smaller time period, maybe one geographic area, so they can look a little better. I mean, face it, sometimes the SCA looks like a, a, a bad day at the uh, Time Travel Bureau. <laughs> you know, you, you had Elizabethan courtiers standing next to, you know, rough-hewn Vikings and, you know, the occasional samurai thrown in. But uh, for the most part, our our stuff is beautiful, and we've done good work. Basically all there is to it. It's just a very simple, early scientific machine. You can hang it up in your camp. Enjoy it. It's that easy to make. Thank you. Quality of the work varies 
because the S we have brand new people next camp next to people who've been in for 10, 20 years. So you'll see somebody in a a pup tent, you know, with a cooler and a barbecue next to somebody who's got a beautiful, elaborate medieval encampment. There's some effort made to, you know, have period areas and non-period areas, and I think that's a good idea. Archery is also enjoyed by many that come to the war. There are competitions for archers to enjoy along with some good old target practice. Some people don't realize the archer played an important role in the Middle Ages. As history tells us, archers were often the deciding factor in battles. Although there are many different aspects of Australia War, the one thing that draws most everyone here is inherent in its name. War. Politics. Medieval style. For those who prefer romance and civility, there is rapier fighting. Pirates and musketeers duel to the death, sometimes in torchlight. Sometimes on the plank of a pirate ship, where the danger comes not only from the opponent's fast blade, but from the sharks circling below as well. When that's not enough, there is always the rapier wars. For anyone wishing to experience full contact, high energy martial combat, there is heavy fighting. Fighters from around the world strap on suits of armor and test their skills against others proficient in the art of war. 
The tournaments allow fighters to test their skills one on one. Wow. I did, oh, okay, I was going to say, I heard something metal, but baskets. And war fighting is where massive engagements and battle tactics are learned and tried, sometimes successfully, sometimes not. Most people outside the SCA don't understand what is involved in a heavy fight. Many ask, is it a martial art? It is a martial art, and people don't treat it as such because it doesn't have a, a fancy Japanese name. It's a ferocious martial art, devastating martial art. If, if we were to change our rules very slightly so that um, you couldn't you could hit you know below the knees and hands and stuff for target uh, SCA would be devastating. It's because we have an open style. Anything goes. You see, we can use any blow that works. And we're not locked into a pattern. And one reason for that is that we're fighting different sized people against each other. And people with different skill levels, different strengths, and different weaknesses. And we also allow different weapons on the field. So you have to be able to fight with anything. There's almost no other martial art that allows anything like that. It's much more controlled. We're we're the most uncontrolled, controlled martial art that I've ever heard of. 
The only thing that comes close are those unlimited fighting competitions where you can walk out with almost anything you can carry, as long as it's not truly lethal. And we don't even have quite that restriction. If we weren't wearing the armor, some of our weapons are lethal. And that's something to consider. And that's something else to consider about SCA combat. It's, it's not a joke. It's not a, a show. You walk out there in your armor, you better face the fact that if something went very wrong, you could be dead. Oh, 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 oh,
Yeah, so I just went around the other side. Actually, this is the first defensive line here, but they didn't get formed up quick enough. Most of the forces got used that were in this pocket here got used uh, taking, that, taking that hill. Yep. Whoever retreated back pretty much survived. There's Damon and Cedric. So we lost it, but we made them pay for it. Yep, down with it. 
<laughs> nice. Go on. Slight little adjustment. It's a, it's a serious sport, and it probably deserves more respect than it gets. Um, we're not a show. I've seen other people who try to fight with sword and shield. I've seen uh, the jousters in Europe, the ones who do it seriously. They're fabulous on horseback. Take them off their horses, give them a sword and shield, and they are much less than fabulous. They are terrible. Half transpire if you could beat them. And that's not, you know, just bragging. I, I've, I've seen this myself. Oh, it's a lot of fun. What do I love about the SCA? Well, I love the fact that I can go out there, hit my best friend as hard as I want, and go have a beer with him later. Well, that's what I say when people ask. Let's just say me. that Amy's top ten rushes had it all wrong. Top, <laughs> this top ten rushes. Rushes. This is this is this is my rush. Yeah. I've done a lot of competitive sports. I'm not so keen on one-on-one -on -one stuff. I really like team stuff, and I guess I've just had always a thing for military and to be part of an army. A walking army to march up in your line and to face the opposing kingdom, Definitely. the opposing guys, and still know that you can go buy them a beer afterwards. The adrenaline, adrenaline rush. The, the camaraderie. Although they move a little bit faster than I do today, but you know, pulling together with a bunch of your closest friends, nothing quite like it. Right. <laughs> the pageantry, the romance of it. Close. <laughs> Close. Yeah. I love to hit people. Yeah. After a hard day at war, a nice warm shower is what's needed to knock the dust off and prepare for the evening. The full moon lights the evening and the drums beckon in the night.
SCA is more than just a club. It's a way of life. Depending on your interests, you can make it a career or just a hobby. There are all levels of participation. Oh yeah, sure, it's just a place you can go and rest up in a costume and hit people with sticks and get drunk, right? No, the society is much deeper than that. And so anybody who really thinks about it will realize it could not have held itself together if it wasn't, if it didn't tap into some arch archetypical um, root that American society has grasped at continuously since the 1800s. The SCA provides an outlet for that, that wish for the romantic. But there were other groups like the SCA. You know, there was the Mythopoeic Society that was dedicated to Tolkien. There were groups whose names I've forgotten that, that held medieval feasts and dressed up in costumes and things. Why did the SCA flourish when other groups did not? My suspicion is that if we had something that attracted people from a wide variety of parts of society, um, we have the fighting, we have feasting, we have dancing, we have archery, we do all those things. We don't just do one or two of them. So we keep getting new people coming in. Um, I think that's why the SCA has the appeal that it does. Australia War provides a release for many, whether it's through fighting or the arts, archery or the pageantry, there is something for everyone interested in what the past might have been. A time for friendship and fun. Australia War provides it all.